whenever somebody gives you a tennis betting or trading strategy, usually it's the uji witchy, flubby, amazing, whatever strategy. Uh, it's just sort of pitched to you and nobody attempts to explain any of the detail or mechanics behind it and what makes it successful or why. So what I'm going to do in this video is unusual. I'm actually going to talk about a strategy, but we're going to do a deep dive into all of the detail so that you can truly understand exactly what makes the strategy work or what won't make it work and also where you would and wouldn't deploy it. So if that sort of thing interests you, then just watch the rest of this video. So there's a tennis Betfair trading strategy that's been around for a large number of years. It's called the 1540 strategy. This is how it's represented. And the crux of this strategy is when a player is down 1540 on their serve, or maybe love 30, or maybe even love 40, you can just nip in and grab a few ticks worth of profit. The idea being that the player that is serving is under a lot of pressure and all they need to do is lose another point and uh, the market will have to adjust to account for the fact that their serve has just been broken. Now, the interesting thing about this strategy is this sort of can work, uh, but it's very subject to a number of different criteria, uh, which we're going to discuss in a second. And in fact, there are certain times of the year when you need to flip this strategy pretty much on its head, because the whole idea of being able to profit within a market is being able to understand when you enter the market, what your potential upside is, what your potential downside is, and how likely is that to occur. And as I've often said in the past, for every strategy, there's a market and every market a strategy. And your role as a trader is to match those two up. Everything works, but only if you put it in the right market. And nothing works if you put it in the wrong market or just use it unilaterally and never take any care or attention in terms of what you're attempting to do. So what we're actually going to do in this video is we're going to flip this strategy around and show you when it is likely to work and when it won't work. And obviously when it doesn't work, you can just do the opposite of what the strategy suggests and create a potential profit as well. But more importantly, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to dig underneath the surface to show you exactly what is likely to happen and why. I'll give you the method and process to understand how that could occur and uh, point you at the tools that will allow you to specifically identify when these situations are likely to occur. But yeah, what we're typically looking at here is the 1540 strategy. The conventional wisdom is that if a player is almost about to be broken, uh, then you can nip in and get a little bit of money out of the market. But what I'm going to do is we're going to discuss when that is likely to occur. But we're also going to discuss how you can oppose this strategy and do the complete opposite and still profit, but only if the circumstances are correct. So let's take a deeper dive and understand exactly what's going on within a tennis match and also when you would likely deploy this strategy. So in the traditional sense, when we're using the 1540 strategy, what we're saying is that we're going to either back the person that's receiving the serve or we're going to lay the person that is serving because they're about to lose this particular game and we're trying to benefit from just those couple of little ticks that are going to occur when that break of serve is confirmed. But if a player is 1540 down, what's their chance of actually uh, being able to turn that around and uh, turn the game into their favour, being able to actually serve out from a deficit? If you're at 1540, you're two break points down. So you've got to win two points to make sure that you don't lose that particular game. So you're sort of asking the question, what's the chance of winning two points in a row? That's sort of what it boils down to. Because if we were looking at it from the other perspective in terms of using the 1540 strategy to back the receiver and try and nick a couple of little ticks, we would be asking the question, what's the chance of them winning the next point? The great thing is there is loads of data available on all of the official tour sites. So for the men, it's the ATP tour site and for the women, it's the WTA. And when we look at those two individual sites, you can actually look at all of the top players and it will actually tell you the chance that they have of winning a point on serve. So when we look at this, you can look at the top of those charts and you can actually identify the players that are particularly good at serving and therefore likely to win a point. And if we're looking at that percentage and we're sort of saying, well, what's the chance of them winning two points? Uh, that's quite easy to work out as well. 
But you can also look at things like the returners and you can see how good people are actually getting serves back. And combining those two statistics will give you a good indication as, as to the ability of a player to either lose that point and lose that game or necessarily win a couple of points and save the game, in which case you will get a movement within the market. How much movement will you get? I will show you in a second. But what I wanted to do was talk you through that because this is how we're going to solve this problem and identify exactly when is a good time to uh, particularly do this trade um, or not, depending upon which side of it that you are actually on. So yeah, the official ATP and WTA websites actually have loads and loads of data based around each of those individual players, giving you the chance of them winning a point on serve. But also you can actually go in and have a look at this uh, by surface type. So gender differences are apparent when you're looking at the chance of winning a point on serve as are surface types. So it's worth going into a deeper dive to understand specifically why that's so important. So I've pointed you at the WTA and ATP websites where you can learn about the chance of a player winning a point on serve. But it's important to understand from a broad perspective how this should influence every decision that you make when you're actively trading tennis. Because when we look at either at the chance of a men's player winning a point on serve or a women's player, there are big differences between those two. But also when we look at surface type, there are fairly significant differences. And the best way to look at that is from a very broad perspective so that you can get a much better grip on exactly what strategy you should be using when and in what tournament. So let's have a look at the service stats for men's tennis. Across the last 52 weeks, the top 50 men win a point on serve roughly two thirds of the time. 67% on hard courts, 65% on clay, and a tour leading 69% on grass. As you move down the rankings, those numbers dip, but stay above 60%, showing how heavily men's tennis still rewards the serve, even outside the elite. Now switch to the women's tennis. The pattern is identical, grass best, clay toughest, but every band sits three to four percentage points lower. The top 50 women post 63% on hard, 61% on clay and 66% on grass. In short, both tours show the same surface hierarchy and a similar five point drop as you move down the rankings, but the men enjoy a consistent serve advantage. Keep that gap in mind when trading Wimbledon, where a men's grass service is a key and critical component. <laughs> Knowing these stats should significantly affect your approach and the way you trade tennis. So when we looked at the ATP site before, I did sort of point you in the right direction here because if we look at Taylor Fritz, he is the serve leader. He's winning the most amount of points on serve, but you can see that's on all surfaces. If we change that to grass, you can see that he is really, really good on grass. He has got a great serve. He is gonna win points on serve. However, if we go to clay, you can see that he isn't even in that top part of the list. So you can see there's a significant difference between um, well, how he performs on clay and how he performs on grass. And this is what you tend to find when you look at different surface types. Uh, it's radically different um, on different types of surfaces. So if you go for a hard court game, um, you can see that he's, uh, he's, he's all right, but he's you know a little bit further down. So Taylor Fritz is a great um, grass court player when it comes to serve. He really has got that completely sussed. So if you're using the 1540 strategy in its traditional sense, what you're saying is this player is almost about to be broken um, and you're trading that opportunity because the chance of winning one point is obviously a lot easier than the chance of winning two. Um, and therefore you will get a couple of ticks out of that strategy. But we can see already by looking at this data that the chance of winning a point on serve varies according to surface and gender type. So as a consequence, a male player with a really big serve on grass is going to stand a chance of actually getting back into that particular game. But if it's a female player on clay, then the likelihood is, is that they won't be able to recover from that particular point. Uh, but of course, what we're talking about here is, you know, we've been looking at the statistics around serve, but how does that actually translate into the chance of recovering uh, from 1540 down? Let's understand how winning a point on serve will translate into turning things around. What I've created for you here to make things really simple 
is a graph of how often a player will win a point on serve and how that translates to their chance of not being broken. Let me explain what you can see. Think of the line on the graph as a hope meter for servers who are two points from being broken. The bottom of the graph, 40% is where weak or nervous servers live. If you're there, you only wriggle out of 1540, about once in 20 tries. As you move to the right, you're winning more of your service points and the line climbs steadily. In the middle, around 65 to 70%, the curve shows you'll escape roughly three or four times out of 10. Keep sliding further right and the odds get even better. Big servers who win 75% of their points are back to level half the time and the strongest servers, 80 to 90%, turn double break point into little more than a nuisance, surviving most of the time. The big takeaway, every small improvement in your serve, higher first serve percentage, sharper placement, better second serves, pushes you along that line and gives you a noticeably better chance of holding even when you're in deep trouble. Female players on clay are likely to be towards that bottom left. Big serving male players on grass are more likely to be towards the top right. If you are using the 1540 strategy to get a break of server you want to be on the left, if you want to bet or trade on a player holding their serve, you want to be on towards the right. Now it's important to understand that when we see an opportunity, there are potentially multiple payoffs depending on where we are in the match. Fortunately, we can solve that problem as well. Let's do that. So when I first started trading tennis, I wanted to know, you know, if I'm gonna put a trade in the market, how can I frame it? You know, if this happens, then this will be my profit. If that happens, then this could be my potential loss. And this is the chance of that happening and all of these sort of things. So me being me, what I actually did was create an entire tennis model. And that tennis model is available to you free with inside Bet Angel, and it is called Tennis Trader. And the whole idea of Tennis Trader is to give you some foresight into what is going to happen next in the market. Now, it can only work within the parameters in which it's given. And, you know, you're going to have to look at it and sort of say, well, this is what's likely to happen. But say a gust of wind catches the ball and the player tries to reach for it and twists their ankle or perhaps they're feeling, you know, all of these little things in there. Obviously, the model can't take account of, but it can take account of pure mathematics. So it can say, on average, over a large number of matches, this is what will happen to the odds if the score moves from here to there. And the great advantage of that is it will allow you to identify specifically scenarios that are favorable for whatever strategy that you're using. And in particular, in this case, you know, what happens if a player holds a serve or breaks a serve from a certain scoreline? So let's have a closer look at Tennis Trader and how you would specifically use it for this strategy. So you can see here we're looking at a tennis match. Um, I've got the odds of the match. The match hasn't started yet. And I've also fired up Tennis Trader. And the great thing about Tennis Trader is it will tell you all sorts of information about the match. It will look at this particular match. It will look at the differential between the two players and then it will forecast forward things that are going to happen and the odds that it will reach when those things happen. So you can see this is the state of the match at the moment. There are no points or games or sets in this particular match. Uh, but you can see what would happen if this match goes one way or the other. So if we say that uh, Fritz is serving first and uh, Brooksby wins the first game, then you can see the odds on Fritz will move from 131 to 149. However, if Fritz wins the first game, you can see they move to 129. So there's not much movement in um, to his advantage if he's serving first in the first game of the first set of the match. Now, if we say that um, Jensen Brooksby was the player that uh, was serving first. Then you can see if Brooksby wins, then you can see the price on Fritz goes out to 135 from 131. Um, but if he manages to break, you can see it will move 10% in your favor. So that gives you a good feel for exactly what's gonna happen. And of course, you know, if we go forward and we change the score to some other score line here, then we can actually get a view um, on exactly what the score should be at that particular moment in time. So if there were one set all at the beginning of the third set, then you can see exactly what would happen at that particular moment in time. So it allows you to really look in great depth to understand exactly what is going on within all of that. It does all of the maths for you. That's the, that's the clever thing about it.
Now, of course, we're actually looking at it from um, an individual game perspective. So you can do it this way. You can fiddle around with the numbers um, or we can actually go to the game matrix and then you can actually see how the match will play out from different score lines from there. So this is perfect for looking at this particular strategy or anything that you have related to uh, what you're attempting to do in tennis, because it will you, you don't have to think about what could happen. You actually know um, it displays it all beautifully, neatly right in front of you. And if you want to fiddle around with the numbers, you saw those WTA and ATP tennis stats. We can actually go to the spanner here and we can actually adjust um, the values of each individual player winning a point on serve. And that will allow you to endlessly play around with all of the detail in terms of what could happen within an individual game or an individual match. And that's why I'm showing it to you, because it's such a useful tool uh, when you're trading on tennis. It allows you to frame your trade perfectly. It will allow you to get into the match at times when it's advantageous to you and when you're likely to get a move that has a decent payoff. And it will allow you to also get into the match at a point at which you know the level of risk that you're taking if it all goes wrong. So yeah, um, fire up Bet Angel, go to the tennis ball icon, click on that. And if you're looking at a tennis match, then you'll automatically get Tennis Trader up and calibrated with the current match. And from there, you can fiddle around with it, change calibration, do all those wonderful things and get the perfect trade. So the 1540 strategy was a strategy where you typically lay the current server on the basis that they're about to get broken. Now, as we've seen, um, the chance of a player winning a point on serve can vary dramatically by gender and surface type. But also that movement that occurs at this particular point within a match uh, can be probably not quite as much as you thought or perhaps more significant. But you actually have a method now to understand exactly what that movement will be. And when we're looking at a tournament like Wimbledon, for example, where the serve is very dominant, the chance of a player turning around their service game, despite having a a couple of points deficit or so on, or a couple of break points against them is significantly enhanced. So rather than looking to sort of lay the server or back the outsider as you would do in a traditional 1540 strategy, it often makes sense to do the complete opposite. Because the server is so dominant at Wimbledon, when you get a big server against another player who's had a few points against him, uh, then it's quite likely that the odds will tip back in the other direction and his chance of closing out that particular game uh, will be significant. And if we actually look at that by surface type, you can actually see that the chance of a player with an average chance of uh, winning a point on serve can actually turn around those individual games and create a decent payoff. And if you're uncertain about any of this, then of course you've got tennis traders to play around with the odds even before the match has started. So you can actually see what sort of scenarios are likely to play out how that will impact the score and the odds at that particular moment in time. And therefore that will give you an absolutely massive steer as to when you should deploy the strategy. And the great thing about that is you can learn all about that before the match has even started. So you're poised and ready uh, to be able to take advantage. Also, if you go onto the Bet Angel forum, you can actually create an alert so that it can scan all of these matches automatically and highlight to you when this scoreline has occurred. And then that will give you the opportunity to jump on it and do something about it. So, yeah, what I've tried to do in this video is give you a strategy, showing you when it works, when it doesn't work, and maybe when you want to do the opposite of what the original strategy suggested. But more importantly, to frame that trade for you and to give you a good indication as to when it is likely to occur in either direction. And especially when we're looking at tournaments like Wimbledon, where the serve is dominant, I always prefer to look at serve dominant uh, trading strategies. These are the ones where you're most likely to be able to profit if the server manages to follow through or get a few points on their serve or indeed manage to bludgeon their way through an opponent. So yeah, it's always worth understanding the core detail that sits behind that as well. Anyhow, I hope that that video has been useful for you.